Hello, everybody. I'm here today with somebody who is a bit of a, a legend uh, amongst the uh, fantasy community, of course. We know him from his role as the seventh doctor in the last days of the classic series back in the 1980s. And of course, we remember him as Radagast in Peter Jackson's Hobbit films. But I'm talking today to the wonderful Sylvester McCoy about his role in an upcoming film called The Owners, which I think arrives on streaming services next month and on physical media the month after. Good afternoon, Sylvester. How do we find you today? Oh, alive. You find me alive. Yes, Good you were just you. saying you've, you've had your jab. I've had my jab as well, which <laughs> is uh, yeah. That's a nice. positive move. How have you been coping with uh, the last year or so with lockdown? Of course, it's difficult. It restricts your, obviously, your ability to work and go out and practice your craft. Has that been particularly frustrating or are you more concerned with the bigger picture, as it were? Well, um, bizarrely, I thought I'd hate it. But I've rather enjoyed it, really, because, I mean, I spent well, many years. I'm a great traveller. I've travelled extensively all around the world. Um, you know, one of the great journeys I did was only two years ago. I got on a train from Edinburgh and I ended up in uh, Hanoi and I went there all the way by train through, wow. uh, you know, Europe, Russia, China, Mongolia. Yeah. Uh, and so I thought I'd hate to be locked up. Mm. But I haven't, it hasn't bothered me, really. And I've no. discovered something which really surprised me. I don't mind my own company. I yes. thought yeah. the reason why I kept traveling around the world the way I did was I was trying to run away from myself. Yeah. The only bugger was every time I got there, I'd yeah. turn up. <laughs> so that, that trip, was that a planned or did you just get on a train and see where it took you? No, no, I, I planned it because um, my, my first grandchild was going to come into the world in Bangkok and oh, um, yeah. on September of that. And so I, I, I was doing a play at the Edinburgh Festival and then I with um, Bob Picardo and then I uh, finished that and jumped on the train and off I set. Oh, it was exactly. six weeks. Wow. Wonderful adventure. That's amazing. But yeah, as you say, all that's stopped at the moment, but hopefully... But it hasn't bothered me. I don't no. mind. I really don't mind. No, no. I'm surprised. I, I worried about the fact. I'm not worried. Hmm. Yeah. I think uh, after a while, people have just got so used to this way of life that it just becomes normal and you just adapt to it, don't you? You have to yeah. adapt to survive and we know we're going to come out of it. Um, I want to talk to you obviously specifically about your new film, which as I mentioned is coming out shortly, which yeah. I think made I think it was made a couple of years ago, but it's finally sort of arriving now. It's called The Owners. Yes. Um, I think it's fair to say it's a bit of a departure for you in terms of the sort of project that you're involved with. Um, it's I don't want to give too much away, obviously, because it's not out yet. So I'm going to try to avoid spoilers. Um, I think broadly speaking, we can call it a, a home invasion subgenre sort of film. You yes. get how to call Robert Huggins. Can you sort of set the scene for us? Tell us a little bit about Robert and where we find him when the film opens up. Well, Robert is a, is a, is a doctor <laughs> type cast again. Yes. Um, <laughs> and he, uh, he has this wife who he loves desperately, but I think she's got Alzheimer's. She definitely, you know, needs a great deal of care. But every Friday, regularly, as old people do, he and his wife leave their house and go off to um, have a, a meal, which they do regularly. And then but the cleaning lady's son has heard about this, but also the cleaning lady happened to mention to his son that there's a huge safe door in the basement. And so he happens to let it spill on the pub with his local mates and a, a new guy in the group who's very villainous decides that they should break in and get all the dosh that's behind that um, door. And so they break in. And then we come back because yeah. it takes them, they couldn't, it took them too long to break into the, uh, the safe. And we come back and they capture us and terrorize us. And that's when it all kicks off, I think it's fair to say. Because, uh, yeah. I watched the film last night. I, I really enjoyed it. And oh, I, particularly, great. I'm glad. Uh, I particularly enjoyed it because it was so interesting to see you playing against type, if I can call it that, because we're used to seeing you playing these benevolent characters, comedic characters. But this starts off that way, but it sort of turns. And again, I'm trying to avoid the spoilers. Um, yes, I know. Typical. What, attract, what attracted you to this particularly? Was it the fact that it was something so different? Or was it the script generally? Well, yes, it was the fact that, you know, it, I turn. <laughs> I get to play um, against, as you say, type, really. Yeah. 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 Um, and also, uh, Peter Jackson once said to me, he said, you know, Sylvester, you're too nice to be able to play anything bad. Yeah. And I wanted to prove to him I could. Yeah. And I like the way that, as I said, you start off 
playing the victim and yeah. it, it turns and but even when you're no longer the victim you're still playing it as a nice guy which i think subverts what you're expecting because you're being sinister and dangerous but still playing it as the nice guy and i thought that was a really nice little turn that you sort of you don't dislike the character despite the things he ends up doing yes yes well, that's yeah well i think that's always the the uh, the, the dream of playing a villain in any film is to try and find that humanity in him, yeah, yeah. Uh, in a sense, and hang on to it because you know, um, not everyone is completely bad. I mean, yeah, yeah. the president of the United States and the president of um, Brazil, yeah. but not everyone is completely yeah. bad. Yeah, that's a whole different level of evil. We won't go there. Um, no. How would you describe the film? Then would you say it's it's not a horror film? It's a psychological film. It's a thriller. What would you? How would you sum it up? How would you sell it to me? I would say it's a psychological thriller, yes. Mm -hmm. You know, um, uh, I mean, it, it, it was put into a, 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 the Fright Fest Festival in London uh, this year, I think. Um, and uh, it was up for Best Film, nominated for Best Film. That's kind of Fright Fest. So, but I think it's more psychological than horror. Yeah. Yeah. I, I suppose it's the sort of the violent aspect of it and the escalating. Yes. That's, blood, blood yeah. shed, which sort of tips the balance a little bit. How, yeah. How do you as an actor then, because obviously as the film wears on, it does become much more intense and much more violent. How do you as an actor prepare for those sorts of days when you know it's going to be very physical and intense or do you just sort of learn the lines and go in and do it? Yes, I'm afraid I'm not really a method actor. I'm, I'm, I'm an instinctive actor. I sometimes um, don't know what's going to happen. It's like I, I step off the cliff mm. and then see if I can fly. Yeah, yeah, and it's uh, and blessed most times I do fly, something yeah. happens. I don't, it's instinct, it's not, um, it's not, in, it's not, uh, it's not up here. Someone years ago said that I was a bum actor, not meaning I was a bad actor, but I acted with my whole body and my, you know, my, um, yeah. um my yeah. bottom, as it were, yeah. which is, yeah. and it can, it's, it's kind of, it's not the English or British way of acting. It's more of American way of acting. Mm. And I think that it's all involved with that. It's the physicality. Mm. Uh, suddenly it happens. Something happens. Some magic. I don't know where it comes from. Yeah. Thank goodness. Does you that? Know. Do you think that stems from all the stuff you did when you were younger, like Vision On and all those sorts of very physical things, Tiz was and all that sort of stuff that you used your body and all those things? Presumably yes, I, yes, I, I was yes from the very beginning. I mean, I became an actor, you know, kind of latish on when mm. I was twenty-seven, and um, discovered I was carrying this baggage of physicality yeah. that I didn't know I had. And um, I, I have actually played Buster Keaton, who's one of my gods, yeah. and you know, I've played um, Stan Laurel, another one of yeah. my gods. I played these visual, yeah. these visual guys, and um, I just it was there. Mm. I think it might have been to do with my childhood because. My mother was a widow, war widow, and, and um, there was no television in those days, but we had two cinemas and they changed their um, films every two nights. So my mother would go every night to the cinema and take me as a little child. Yeah. And of course, watching, watching television at home is not, not the same uh, intensity as watching it in a darkened room. No, and no. I think I was watching Buster Keaton. I was watching Stan Lord. I was watching Ben Turpin and uh, St Chaplin as a child, as a baby. And suddenly it was all in there and I didn't know it until I was 27. Yeah, yeah. I, I know what you mean. Laurel and Hardy are particularly heroes of mine. I think that yes. I sort of watch them any time. Oh, well, I ended up playing Laurel and on the first night I came off the stage of the play and they said to me, this woman was there and they said, now, who's this? And I panic and thinking, oh my God, is it my wife? Have I forgotten? You know, he's kind of, you know, high, high tension. It turned yeah. out it was Stan Laurel's daughter. She wow. comes to the play and oh, she brilliant. liked it so much. She invited me to her wedding. Oh, it's brilliant. Yeah. It's probably well, one just... step removed from Stan. Yeah. Wow. Oh, it's probably just as well you didn't know that before the performance. Oh, no. I would have been terrified if yeah. I had known that Stan Laurel's daughter was in, yeah. The, uh, yeah. in the audience. Yeah. Because all that is a, a world away from the owners. Um, yeah. do, you, do you use a sort of horror, psychological thriller? Is that the sort of thing that you would watch normally when you're at home? Do you turn to that sort of thing or do you prefer things a bit lighter? No, I like psychological thrillers, but I'm not that, uh, you know, the horror. Um, uh, it has to be really good horror for me to, you know. Yeah. Uh, I mean, my sons, they adore, you know, like um, uh, the, the horror movies that where well, people's heads are all chopped off and rolling down the stairs, all that yeah. kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, 
Well, that's yeah. for them. I'm not yeah. quite into that no. amount of no. blood no. and no. gore. No. Although I have a project coming up with, um, now what's his name? Uh, the uh, oh dear, what's his name? He's a he was a rock star, and now he's a, he makes horror films. Um, no, it'll come to me. It'll come to me. Right. Um, Sounds interesting. I just think, yeah, hang on. It'll, it'll keep going. It'll pop into my head. Yes, yeah. Um, Rob Zombie, that's it. Of course, of course, yes. Well, of course, we know him well, yes. His, his stuff's quite extreme. That's, that's again, an unusual choice for you. Well, yes, but it's, uh, as far as I know, it's a, it's a comedy. Um, All right, know. yeah. Yeah, I think there is a sort of a vein of comedy. It's extreme comedy in most of his stuff, really, isn't there? Yeah. Well, this is hopefully. Um, anyway, that, the, the coronavirus has gotten away of it. Yes, well, quite. Um, the director of the owners, uh, Julius Berg, I think it was his first English language film. Um, yes. How, how did you find working with him? Was he was he a collaborative director? Were you able to pitch in with your ideas? Because I, I get the impression you're the sort of actor who likes to not exactly improvise, but throw in little ideas and uh, and your own take on things. Was did you have that sort of relationship with him? Yes, yes, no, he was very open to, to, to it as well. But he also, he knew what he wanted, do you know what I mean? Yeah. He, uh, you know, he, he, he yeah, and he would, um, he would subtly, he, he would get it, you know, even mm. if you were kind of suggesting, he would, you know, eventually um, gently move you around to what he wanted. Yeah. But, you know, he wasn't um, against these things. No, no. Um, I want to talk about the cast in the film as well. I mean, you've got... Uh, Rita Touchingham, who's sort of an iconic figure from the 60s. Had you worked with her before? No, I hadn't. Um, and I must say, it was an utter joy working with her. Yeah. She's from Liverpool. Yeah. You know, say no more. She's got yeah. an amazing sense of humour. Yeah. And, of course, when you're making these kind of films, in a way, the uh, when you leave the set, um, you tend to go in for comedy. I mean, we became a double act. Yeah. I mean... The, 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 you know, the makeup ladies in the wardrobe and the, and the technicians look forward to us coming off the set because suddenly we had to release, you know, mm -hmm. that horror uh, and, you know, kind of um, take it to comedy. Yeah. So I, I adored working out where we had such fun, it was yeah. such fun. What I, what I particularly like is, the, again, I'm conscious of spoilers, the relationship with you and her, the chemistry was, was so intense on the screen because despite the things they end up doing, you really get the sense that he's doing things for her because you mentioned she's not well, she's got Alzheimer's. There's a tragedy in the family in the past, again, which I won't go into too much here, but you get the sense that he will do anything for her because of her condition. No, I mean, I think it's a love story. Yeah, yes, it is, yeah, yeah. Quite in a way, it's a love yeah. story. He yeah. loves her and he will do anything, as you say, mm. I mean, um, um, you know, to, 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 to keep her with him. Mm. And if she needs whatever her needs are, yeah, and I won't say yeah. what they are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, quite amazing. What's Williams? the film find out? Yes, Maisie, Maisie Williams, of course. She's a sort of an up and coming young talent at the moment. How yeah. was she to How was she to work with? I imagine she was a ball of energy as well. Oh yeah, she was a great ball of energy, and also she she was really uh, she was really in her own in her zone. Yeah, but she was in my zone. She was in everyone's zone. She's got such energy. I predict that not only will she be, you know, carry on with a very successful acting career, but I wouldn't be at all surprised if she became a director or yeah. and a producer. Yeah. She's really, you know, she's grown up in the industry yeah. and she knows it inside out. Yeah, she's she's wonderful. Yeah, and I suppose for youngsters in the industry now, it's probably easier for them to cross. The, the boundaries into doing directing and writing and things, perhaps. Uh, Absolutely, because I mean, with the technology we've got, you know, with, yeah. with an iPhone, you could make an amazing film. Yeah, you know, Or, yeah. Uh, you know, it's, it's, all, it's all that kind of stuff going on, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, about the, the violence and the horror, I mean, I'm, it is quite grim and quite dark. Um, how would you prepare an audience for the film? Would you say to them, uh, prepare to go to some dark places? Because it certainly touches some... Uh, difficult visuals, particularly I'm thinking of the, the sort of fights towards the end and things in it, and as it heads towards the climax. How would you sort of sell it to the audience uh, to prepare them for it? Um, uh, be prepared to jump in your seat in mm. the cinema. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah really? Ah! It, it's, it's a very physical role as well. There's lots of sort of pushing and shoving. And how involved are you in all that sort of stuff? Do you like? Do you still like being involved in all that? So I know you. Yes, yes. No, I mean I've always um, 
stuntmen always hate working with me because I want to do my own stunts. Yeah. But stuntmen, stuntmen, because of my age and all that now, I can't quite do as many as I I, I, yeah. I used to do. So, mm. yeah. 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 What was the filming scheduling? As I said, I think it was, as I say, it was filmed a couple of years ago. And I imagine it was a, obviously you're in a, a, a restricted location. So I imagine that you bond with the cast and crew very well over that period. But yes, it was lovely. It was yeah. a lovely atmosphere. And of course, the director, you know, uh, he, he, he creates the atmosphere and uh, the technicians. And I enjoyed working with all of them very much. And, yeah. you know, the young, uh, the young male actors were, um, they yeah. were just, you know, they were just great. Yeah. I, when I when I saw the film, you know, for the first time, I um I uh, I, I was uh, I, uh, the, the opening is mostly you know the young actors, yeah, yeah, and I was just so impressed by them, you know, Jake Curran and you know yeah. Ian Kenny and, and and Andrew Ellis, yeah, it was it was lovely. Well, them. I just felt it was so engrossing, and the characters came across so well, you know, yeah. yourself and and your wife and all the kids. And it just yeah. it just pulls you into it, and there's that feeling of the escalation of dread and terror when you know that things are going to go go completely. Not I don't know if it's wrong is the right word, but it's just going to it's going to go in a completely different way that you yeah. think it's going to go. And I really I really appreciated that from it. Oh, good, 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 good. What's, it's funny, isn't it? It's very difficult to talk about it with that. Well, it, yeah, I mean, even now, I think we've given far too much away. Well, I'm thinking that, yes. Yeah. So, and I'm, I'm trying to think about the questions I've written. I'm trying to reword them yeah. without giving things away. But it, it it's a yeah. film that constantly surprises you, and it, and it never takes you where you think it's going to go. Well, that's, yeah. I mean, and that's a great thing, uh, storytelling. Yeah. I love storytelling like that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. uh, this, seems, this seems to be a project that you're quite proud of, and not only because it's something different, because you worked out well in the end. You're, you're pleased with the end results? Yes, I am. Yes, I am very much so. I, uh, yeah. Um, I, I don't like watching myself too much, but yeah. um, you know it, it was quite fun to watch, see me doing something, you know. Yeah, something so, so totally different. Yeah. yeah. But as I said, I really like the way that your character turns, but you still like him, and I still like your character, especially at the very end. Uh, again, I'm not going to spoil what happens at the very end, but it's yeah. a very nice, sweet moment, which makes you realise how much these characters mean for each other. And it's yeah. hard. It's hard to pull off in what what is ostensibly a sort of a, a horror psychological film to still like the, the the the. I won't even call him a bad guy. I don't think he's a bad guy. He's just trying to. Oh do no, he's a life, he's you know? a, a man utterly in love. It's a sweet love story. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, but only you know the center of the sweet is full of. Yeah. Mm, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, it's an excellent film. I, I, I really enjoyed it. Um, what's and you mentioned the Rob Zombie film that you've got coming up. Anything else? I mean, I know it's hard to sort of pin down other projects and things at the moment with the things still up in the air. But things that are possible that you're thinking about doing? Yeah, there is another thing which is um, a, a short film uh, coming up. Uh, hopefully, if it all works out, because we don't know every no. day it changes. But um, I, I hope to be doing that, and it's some um, young filmmakers and. The story is uh, uh, a young lady's written this really touching story about, uh, you know, uh, a man walking in, with death, you know, in, in the company of the uh, Grim Reaper. Yeah. And it's, it's a sweet and lovely story, really. Yeah. Hopefully um, uh, we can make that. Yeah. What's, what's your preferred sort of area to work in? Film, theatre, TV, or a bit of all of them? Well, a bit of all of them all my life, but now I'm getting older. The theatre work is very, that's the hardest work of all, really. Oh, Other yeah. people don't think you're only up there for two two hours or two and a half hours. But, yeah. I mean, it, 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 that's the, the, you know, the most intense and hardest work of all. Yeah. Um, I, 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 I did a play a couple of years ago, and I, I won't rush to do a play, you know, again, yeah. unless it's really, really interesting. But yeah. um, uh, I, I love doing film. Yeah, I love the the, the the process of film. Yeah, I mean, theatre work is like painting with a broad brush. You know, yeah. got to be big and hit the back wall. Whereas film is like one of those little Japanese brushes. You know, you paint, yeah. and tough. it's short and it's and it's oh, it's so internal. And yeah. it, when you feel kind of, you know, it's it's like a physical, um, and a, 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 yeah, physical feeling when you get it right. We feel yeah. right. Or yeah. Gav almost when he get it right. Oh God, yeah. that, that felt right. That's so you know what I mean. <laughs> of course, yeah. Uh, of course, it, it always helps when you've got a sympathetic director and a good script as well. Because yeah, oh, I, the script, 
a yeah. script and a director. They're, those are the uh, yeah. two most important things in film. Yeah. Um, what was the experience like of uh, working with Peter Jackson on the uh, the Hobbit films? That must have been an extraordinary experience. It was, uh, yes, it was. It was out of this world. It was, uh, in fact, it was the other side of the world. Yes. It was amazing. It was really amazing experience. And, pe and working in New Zealand, away from Hollywood and away from Britain and all that, yeah. you were cut off from the rest of the world and you could focus on it and get on with it. Mm -hmm. And um, I think Peter Jackson incredibly wise in so many ways um he decided to keep it keep make not go to hollywood and make it there but make it in, because yeah. the producers the executive producers in hollywood they were it would take 14 hours to fly all the way there to find out what was going on so he could yeah. just go on and do what he wants to do yeah. Yeah. and that was very canny of him also he was he, he cast it beautifully um he realized that for three years he was going to have to have most of these actors kept together so he cast it with really nice people yeah you know uh, and, and, and that was so important because yeah, yeah. Uh, otherwise the whole thing could have fallen apart if people got really tense. Yeah. And they, had, you know, and they also, you know, the the the, the dwarfs. They, I mean, they they, they were uh, they, they were so uncomfortable. Their costumes were right. extraordinary. They had to have air conditioning blown into them, and uh, you know, they were kind of had to be you know, four hours makeup and everything like that. You know, yeah. the, 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 yeah. but yeah. it was great adventure. Great yeah. adventure. Of course, yeah. And of course, I have to mention Doctor Who, of course, because that's been a big part of your life. Uh, yeah. you're, still, you're still involved with Big Finish, of course. That's still uh, that's giving yes. you a chance to, that's giving you a chance over the years to do things with a character that you weren't able to do because your tenure was cut short. So it must yes. be nice just to be able to revisit that character even now. Yeah, absolutely, it's great. Yeah, and funny as I, I was thinking the other day, I was I was watching an interview with um, John Le Carre, and he was talking about a great influence in his life, some mm -hmm. professor at Oxford University or Cambridge or something like that. And he said something about this guy, and I thought, yeah, that's what I would want to bring to Doctor Who. So I still, which is about him um, seeing. He said he could see, he could see things. He knew he had this. And he said then this seeing, this knowledge, made him, in a sense, melancholy. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I think... That's an area of the Doctor Who which I really like to try and bring out. Yeah, you know, the, the, there's the one where uh, the opening of the Paul McGann, uh, where Tim Paul McGann takes over. Yes. Yeah. Uh, the the um, that he takes on. In that, I arrive solitary, and I think mm. I'd love to do some more stories like that. Yeah, because that's where you could get that sadness of and tragedy that the war the doctor has seen in the universe having been alive for a thousand years you know yeah yeah i mean could you have imagined when you started doing that in 87 that it would still be with you all these years later obviously it was a big thing at the time but you can't presume you thought you know nearly 40 no not really to be there, no, no and, and when, when it finished you know when, when they actually twisted my arm to do a fourth season yeah they thought it was going well and yeah. then things happened i don't know how politically uh, and then uh, they, uh, they, they they let me know we weren't going to do a fourth season just a month or so before we were supposed to. Yeah. Um, so, uh, but being an actor, that happens all the time. Mm. Things go. So I thought that was it. Goodbye, Doctor Who. Been there, done that. Mm. On to the next. On to the next thing. Yeah. Not realizing that the next. Well, I mean, the, all the next were great. But yeah. Doctor Who never left. No, no, it never does, doesn't it? I mean, uh, just to finish off, then um, there's been rumours recently that there's going to be a new Doctor. Do you have any thoughts about which direction you would like it to go? I mean, we've had Jodie Whittaker, who I think has been very good. Uh, yes. I think some of the fans have had difficulty accepting the, the change in gender. But do you think they should carry on with that? Or do you have any particular thoughts on where they might go or should go? Well, I, I kind of feel that, you know, because of Black Lives Matter, and which yeah. I agree with utterly and totally, that maybe we should go down that route, you know. Yeah. You know, uh, a, a black guy or, or an Indian or, or, or something like that yeah. uh, would be uh, really interesting, yeah. I think. Yeah. I think it's about getting the right actor, really, the best person at the audition or the best person who... And the right scripts. Her. Yeah, and the right scripts, of course, yeah. yeah. I mean, that is, you know, so that's important. The, that's the main thing, isn't it, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, once again, it's been fantastic chatting to you. Um, again, congratulations on the owners. Best of luck with it. I know, I know it's difficult you. these days because the cinemas aren't open to show it, but I would yeah. encourage people to seek it out because it's uh, it's not what you expect and it's, it's certainly not what people will expect from you. So we're in the park and Big Man Terry tells us there's a nice big old house and the nice old owners are going to be out. Keep a look out, babe. Open fucking sesame.
There is a ton of cash in us. Can't wait till they get back. They give us what we want. Done, Mary. Drink your tea. Oh, we really must fumigate this place again soon. We're plagued by vermin. Every sort of pest. Doggies in the pot. Babies in the stall. 